Hey guys, Jam here, and in today's video, I'm going to be kit bashing three completely different Blade God veteran chapters, as voted by you guys on the Community Army poll I posted a while ago. As of right now, as I'm busy recording this video, the poll is currently tied between Black Templars, Blood Angels, and Dark Angels. So I figure, what better way to do it than just, well, do all three in one video? And of course, the Blade God veterans kind of fit the aesthetic for all of them. So there's three of them. So yeah, why not? And because it's like three guys, this video would be very, very long if I went my usual kind of way of doing things. But I'm going to try and speed it up this time around. I'm not going to be as in-depth. I'm just going to tell you the parts that I'm using as I'm doing it. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my three dudes here. Don't worry, they're not glued together because they're the push fit kind of ones. They're all just kind of pegged together. You can take them apart real easy there. Just got them there because I was kind of just kind of figuring out what they look like, which one I want to work where. Now the first part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting off shoulder pads. Now for you guys, if you're doing a Dark Angel, Black Temple or whatever, you don't really need to do this part. You can just use transfer sheets on the shoulder pads that you got here. But if you know, if you want some of the actual like sculpted shoulder pads, you might want to follow this part as well. So I'm going to do it for one and then I'm going to cut because I'm not going to show you guys six shoulder pads getting cut off because if you guys know anything about my community army yet, you'll know that I'm kid bashing every single Space Marine chapter that I can think of, well, that you guys are voting on, but I'm also inducting them into the Death Watch so they can all get, well, work in one army together. So this shoulder pad is going to be a Death Watch shoulder pad, but obviously if you're doing, like I said, a back Templar or something like that, then you just, you know, take that shoulder out, whatever. So yeah, let's get cracking with that. So usually with any of these like easy build monopose kind of things where the shoulder pads are like stuck in there, you know, you gotta you gotta slice them off. I did it for my Dark Imperium box, you know, like gotta cut them off, try and get those uh, nice sculpted pads on there. Let me just remove all the parts that I don't need so I've got better access into this bad boy. So definitely don't glue your models together first because it'll make it slightly more difficult. And as always, normally Space Marines kind of have like a, they're kind of inner shoulder pad and then they've got the outer shoulder pad, if that makes any sense. Like I'll get this one over here or not, I just dropped that on the floor. I'll grab another one. If you see this one, it's got this kind of like rounded shoulder pad section. And then you put the actual logo shoulder pad on top of that. So we want to kind of cut this, that we still got this kind of like rounded bit to it. And as you can see here, we've got that kind of molded out for us already. So all we're going to do is get our clippers and very, very slowly and gently just chop our way through this. We're not going to use clippers the whole time. And then when we get to a certain point that we're going to fit the shoulder pad, if it doesn't work, we just kind of clean it down with the shoulder pad, carry on. So best way to do it is just get started, really. I mean, this is such a shame because these are very nice shoulder pads. So as you can see, now we're going to move on to the hobby knife and we're just going to very, very gently start nipping this down and we'll kind of file it slash smooth it down towards the end to make a nice rounded surface okay so there we have it it took quite a bit of slicing because obviously if you can see this this one here is a very chunky shoulder pad and because of that actually if you wanted to keep that bulkiness you could use aggressor or just the gravis armor kind of shoulder pads on there and you could do much less snipping and it'll fit on pretty quick but because i'm going for like kind of first born marine shoulder pads on both sides I've had to slip it down quite a bit smaller, but as you can see, it fits pretty good now. All I'm going to do now is just kind of smooth it off and round it up. So I'm going to use the blade kind of like backwards and just kind of do that and file it down to this nice and smooth and round. And like I say, all you're going to do is snip, dry fit, snip, dry fit until you get it right. All right, so after about a half an hour, possibly more, probably more, of slicing and dicing, I managed to smooth out all these shoulder pads and now they can fit on normal old school shoulder pads so that fits on really nice on that one did the sword arms as well like i said just clipping and filing until you kind of get it right just dry fitting every now and again so you can see you can pop them all on now they'll fit really really nice so i'm gonna be able to get some of these like shoulder pads from the old school marine upgrade sprue so this is from the obviously the blood angel upgrade sprue you can obviously use the new Primaris versions if you want, but I feel these have more character. And of course I'm going to do, I've got the Dark Angel one as well. But what I have done is this one, because you know on Death Watch the 
right hand shoulder is the one with the look like the chapter logo on it so i've left this one for the black templar and i'm just going to use a transfer sheet on that instead of slicing that off so and it kind of still looks right with the smaller like death watch shoulder pad on the other side as well so yeah it's the only one i haven't snipped off so yeah now that the shoulder pads are done i think we could probably start sticking the actual torso -y bits onto there so we can actually start fitting the models together and you know working out the actual cool stuff unless of course you want to cut off these kind of tilt shields or I can't remember the proper name for these things because you do get some chapter specific ones and stuff like that like the dark angels upgrade sprue has one if you want to kind of swap it over but the plans i've currently got i think i'm just going to leave them like that even though they're death watch and they want to be from different chapters i still want to make them somewhat uniform i don't want them to look completely different in the entire chapter if you know what i mean I mean the entire unit. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start gluing the bodies together. And there we have it. Most of the model is together now on the bases and everything. So all that we've got ready to do next is attach this shield and swords, get the heads on. The reason why this guy's already got a head on is this head, this helmet is pretty much perfect for Black Templar. So I don't really want to change it up. I think this guy's probably going to be my least changed out of the lot because you know, these Blade Guard veterans are pretty much made for Black Templars. So he's going to be the most Spog standard. I'm going to put, be putting some chains and stuff like that. But yeah, that's that guy. So yeah, let's start attaching the weapons and stuff like that and see if we want to change them up at all. So let's firstly get the swords on because I think we can pretty much do that without getting in the way of the models too much. So it's not going to block up any details if we want to do some any changing later. So I'm just going to stick a bit of glue on each arm. Nozzle's coming out. Now I've just got to figure out uh, which arm belongs to which one. So I believe this one goes on here. And this one obviously goes on here because that's the other non-Black Templar one. So yeah, got that arm on there. I think that's the right spot. Nice and flush. And of course, then we've got the Black Templar dude. So stick his arms there. Nice and easy. Make sure it's also flush in the back and everything. Man, I already dig these Blade Guard veterans. I might have to pick up another set to kit bash for my Space Wolves army as well. Even though I've made my own Blade Guard veterans, but I mean, these models are just incredible. So yeah, let's get the shields on now. I think, apart from my Black Templar, I think the rest of the shields can go on as well, possibly. I'll have a quick dry fit to see if they're going to get in the way of anything. Alright, as I was busy checking the shields and stuff, completely forgot, one of my plans are that I had in mind while building these models was I'm going to be green stuffing some extra bit of robe on this blood angel right here. So what I've actually done is I've removed the holster and kneecap kind of thing from there because it wasn't quite set yet. So I think that might make it slightly easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that right now. Then we'll move on to the rest of the easier stuff. All right, so this is going to be probably the hardest and definitely the most time-consuming part in this entire video. And this is, I'm going to be adding a bit of green stuff. And I'm going to get an image up in a second to show you guys where I got the idea from. But yeah, I'm going to try and get some like green stuff robe coming from about there, flowing down like across his chest and into this robe that's coming down here. Now, just a, like a pre-warning here, I'm definitely not an experienced robe green stuffer. It's probably going to look horrendous, but... If this comes out right, this is definitely going to pump that model up to the next level. This is going to make it look like a real blood angel. So yeah, wish me luck and let's get on it. Nice so and get my water. I always misjudge how much I need, but you know, rather safe than sorry. I'm going to try to go for slightly more blue. I mean, slightly more yellowy color. All right, so I reckon that's probably enough. Let's just uh, mix it all together. Okay, let's roll this out. You know, I really should invest in some actual green stuff sculpting tools at some point in my life but for right now i'm just going to use this to roll it out if it will stay in place now i'm going to try and get a visual of how much i actually need to cut because i'm going to pre-cut it into the kind of shape of one so i'm going to slice it down like that and then down like that and if it doesn't work out we just remold it and try again yeah that's probably way too big but like i said we can work around it Let's see how big it is how it fits there they were not actually too far off, to be honest. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice a bit more for this side. And possibly off the bottom. You know what? I think that's good enough. I'm going to put a tiny little bit of super glue around there just to hold it in place while I'm working on it. Okay, we've got a bit of super glue there. Let's 
hopefully get this in place the first time. You guys can already see what I'm going for, hopefully. Push that in there, and let's start working it in. Obviously, we have to tuck it into the belt there. Now, oh, that's, that's super annoying. I've got this hard piece of yellow there, which is going to ruin this whole thing now, really. And one thing I'm going to do as well, because obviously I sliced it at a really like, strong angle, so I'm just going to kind of dab it around there just to kind of soften that edge up a bit. And obviously get it more flush to the body. Like I said before, I'm literally just winging this. I have barely any experience doing this kind of stuff. Use the end of my paintbrush if I don't want to have any like too fine lines just to get it in place. Just using an assortment of like my paintbrushes and my scalpels and whatever things I can get my hands on ready that I think can work. I'm super annoyed by not seeing this yellow part though. I don't know if I can get that out without ruining it. Alright, let's try and get some kind of creases here at the bottom where it would be tucking into the belt. Alright, unfortunately I had to risk it. I've ripped that hard bit of green stuff out. That was my fault for not checking for that because I know that does happen quite often. But I should be able to save this hopefully. Use the fat flat end of the hobby knife to just kind of tuck it under there. Okay, so what I'm really going to do at this point is I'm going to make sure that I get some folds and creases in there, kind of like that, just to make it look a bit more natural, and then I'll get back to you guys, because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do a great job on camera anyway, but you guys kind of get the idea. Even like that, I think it looks pretty effective, but, you know, we've got to get some decent creases in there. Okay, so that's in a pretty good spot. I did, it only took me a couple se well, seconds, a couple of minutes to get it there, just, you know, using my knife and whatever I had to make these... Folds probably too many because you know like there's only like one big fold and a couple like two three smaller folds whereas there's like multiple and what I normally do is as well is I get like a paintbrush a little bit damp and I just kind of like run it over to kind of smooth it out a bit sometimes if you've got like a really hard paintbrush one that's been sat around for too long that normally works kind of nicely as well because you can kind of sculpt with it while smoothing it out and eventually it loosens up and stuff like that. But to be honest, my green stuffing rope skills is awful. And I think that actually looks pretty possible. So I'm going to leave it. And I want to get to that point where I'm like making it worse. Just trying to by trying to make it better, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I don't know. Let you guys comment below what you think of that green stuffing rope right there. It's something I definitely need to practice. But I feel like that definitely gives it a completely different vibe now. And possibly more Blood Angel-y, I hope. So now I can stick the knee and gun back on there, especially before the green stuff dries because I might need to push in there a little bit. All right, I glued in the knee and the pistol holster, and as you can see, it kind of pushed the green stuff up a bit. So all I'm doing is I'm pushing it back so it's not folding over the gun, and then I'm just going to kind of smooth it out again, hopefully, and should be back to looking decent. And there we have it. Like I said before, I'm going to leave it there, I don't want to make it any worse than that, but it's like behind the pistol holster now, I think it looks it looks good enough. Like I say, for me, for my skills, I'm actually pretty chuffed with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually just stick the shields on everybody. Okay, so let's quickly move on to the Black Templar shield. And while we're at it, we're going to do his sword as well, and that is the chains. You can't make a Black Templar without chaining his hands to his weapons. So obviously I haven't stuck this down here. What we're going to do is, I got myself some chain here. This is, if I remember correctly, it's a 1.5 millimeter by 2 millimeter chain. You can normally buy this stuff on eBay or any sort of like modeling store and stuff like that. And this is a really quick and simple way to give Black Templars any mods like quite a lot of character, to be honest. So you're going to need some chain and super glue. And let's get cracking with that. Now, I want the chain to kind of cross over his arm there these hands so it kind of looks like it's holding it in a bit so i'm gonna say i'm gonna put my starting link there and i'm gonna cross over this little bit here and then go around let's move him out the way because we only need the shield right now get my ancient super glue right here let's see if it actually comes out well that's just typical <laughs> as i said it's my ancient super glue and it might not come out it literally floods out and i've had to like soak it up with some tissue there because yeah, that was a bit horrendous and it's all over my fingers now. But all you've got to kind of do is dangle the link that you want into the super glue there. Let's try and get it about there. And all you've got to do is kind of wait for that to set. 
and then you can start wrapping it around. Okay, so that's said enough now. So like I said, you can start wrapping it around. So I've got it going through this little loop there. Then I'm going to have it coming underward there, going over. So as you can see, then we're going to get two wraps around here. Get the second one looking like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip this part here. So then it meets up with that other link there. So we're just going to kind of see where that link is. Sorry, this is a bit fiddly to do on camera. Like I said, we're just going to try and get it roughly measured out. Think about that link there. And we're just going to snip on that point. And then we should be pretty much good to go, really. And just squeeze down. There we go. I'm just going to make sure there's a little bit more glue on here. Hopefully it doesn't come pouring out again. Yeah, there's so much glue. I don't know what's going on with this. But wrap it around, like I said. And I usually get my tweezers for this bit because it's going to be on big old fat sausage hands. And there we have it. Nice and glued on there. I was literally like one link away from meeting it up on the other side. It's just about touching. And I spilled way too much super glue down there. And all we're going to do is make sure the links are kind of solid. So what I normally do, I've shown this before in previous videos. Usually you want like a toothpick or something, but I don't currently have any. So I'm going to use my little tweezers here. And all you do is you dunk it into your super glue. You know, get a little bit of glue on the end. And all you do is kind of dab it on the joints like that. And it will obviously set and all your links and chains will be rock hard. They won't be dangling and moving around. And Bob's your uncle. We've got pretty much solid chains there. They're not going anywhere unless you properly yank on them. It's still kind of setting there. It looks like it's kind of linked up. It's going over his hands, so he's, you know, he's tied in there. And yeah, I think that's a pretty solid looking Black Templar shield right there. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with his sword, obviously. But I'm going to go from the this kind of end of the hilty part. And I'm going to wrap it around his hand and possibly come back to the hilt and then you know harden this chain the same way as I did before. So again just get a blob on there so you can actually start the process. I'm going to stick it at an angle not like sticking straight out because obviously you want to be twisting it around. I'll probably go from like that direction so that might be good enough. Not quite as centralized as I would like so I'll try and maybe move that a little bit. Yeah that's a bit better and like I say just wait for that to dry. Now, obviously, you can twist it around any way you want. You can go against, go around the handle a couple times and then onto the wrist or whatever you want. It's just going to kind of wait till that dries so you can, you know, just like I said, you can figure it out for yourself. Just wrap around there. I think normally two wraps. I think that would look nice. Like two wraps around the wrist, ending back onto the hilt like that, I think will look pretty snazzy. So I'm going to leave it there and then I'm going to snip it around about there. And there we have it, it's wrapped around there, linking back onto there. I don't know how much uh, man maneuverability that would give his wrist and stuff, but eh, it's a, he's a space marine, I'm sure he's got it figured out. It's just, uh, I mean, with all the chains wrapped around and stuff, you can't really figure out where it's linking, where it's not. And like I said before, you just got to harden the shield chains up the same way as before. And boom, that's pretty much the Black Templar, like 90% complete right now. Like I said, I've got the Death Guardy, oh, sorry, I've got the Death Watchy shoulder pad there, but obviously you won't be doing that if you're not doing Death Watch. And I just stuck that on there just to make sure everything's fitting nicely, because obviously I did a lot of cutting in that before everything dries. So yeah, Chains is where it's at for Black Templars, definitely gives it that character, and I think it's looking pretty good so far. All right, that's Blood Angel Dude with his shoulder pad on, shield, green stuffed robe. Simple, but definitely changes it up. And that's the Dark Angel guy. Now, obviously, I haven't done much on him yet, but I got his weapon and everything on there. And to be perfectly honest, if you wanted to go like super over the top with this guy to make him super Dark Angel-y, you could very easily cut this sword out and replace it with the one from the Dark Angel's upgrade sprue. Now, that would look absolutely amazing. But I've got plans for that, so I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to be keeping things a little bit more simple for these guys. Like I say, you could do a lot more crazy things, but that's not what I'm going to be doing today. And of course, we've got the Black Templar guy. Now, he's all done and dusted as well, with these weapon and swords looking real fancy. Now to finish up two super easy parts, and that's the actual chapter symbols. Once again, both of these, the Blood Angel and the Dark Angel ones, are from the old school upgrade sprue. Now I've chosen the ones with like the Remy kind of parts to it because obviously 
you know, that kind of matches the, the room of the normal Blade God veteran shoulder pads and also the Death Watch one. So that kind of works out for me there. So I'm just going to glue those on quick. And hopefully with the way I did everything earlier, they should fit on pretty good. Dark Angel one down, super nice fit there. So he's got the little rivety things there with the ridge as well, kind of fits in with all the other rivets. So it's looking pretty good. Now let's try the Blood Angel one. Now this one I'm a bit wary because the room is really big and there's supposed to be a backpack there, but I think it might fit. All right, now for the, probably one of the most important parts of any kit bash, and that's the head swap. Now, of course, like I already shown the Black Templar, he's just kind of staying like that because that suits him. And then for the Dark Angel guy, obviously you want to, I wanted to kind of go for a, a hooded look. So I got this one here. This is from, I think this is from the Dark Angel's upgrade sprue. But then you can also get one from the Death Watch Kill Team has this bad boy in there. But only one problem with this head is it's really, really small. I have absolutely no idea. Both of these are old school sculpts from the old Mini Marines. And not only, I mean, this guy's like hood thing is kind of like flaring out. So you might think that's the reason, but it's not. I've put it against loads of different heads. And if you put it from chin to chin, you can kind of see that that head is way taller and way like thicker as well. I mean, yeah, this has got nothing to do with this video, really. But if you wanted to kid bash Death Watch, I mean, Dark Angels, that might be something that might come up. But yeah, weirdly enough, I wanted to use this one. But it just looks really, really small. So I'm going to go for this one, I think. Then the Blood Angels upgrade sprue comes with a lot of nice helmets and heads and stuff like that. But this one fits really, really nice with this kind of pose and everything. It just kind of looks angry and aggressive. So I'm going to stick these heads on and give you guys a look. Okay, so we've got the helmets and heads and everything on now, as you can see. Now I've got my Dark Angel dude here with that little hood on. I think it works pretty well with the, the robes and everything on here. Then we've got the Blood Angel helmet here. Really, really like this one. I think the helmet kind of fits with that robe kind of green stuff I've done there. It's looking really, really good. It's probably one of my favorite ones so far. And of course, the Black Templar one, just the standard head there. Now, one of the last things we've got to do, well, one of the last big things we've got to do is the backpacks. Now I'm in kind of two minds about this because I feel like this backpack kind of like halo thing suits all these chapters and it looks really, really good. And it also helps the unit look kind of, well, like one unit really, because they're all a little bit different, but they've got like some stuff bringing them together. So I don't know if I want that kind of unit coherency. Co I don't know if that's the correct word, kind of making them look from the same unit, but it is Death Watch and you kind of want them to be looking a little bit unique. I mean, they've got the same swords and shields as well. Now this one's not sticking on this, so I'm going to take that off. So what I'm going to do is for the Black Templar guy, I'm going to give him the standard one. And then for the Blood Angel, I think I'm probably, I'm not going to cut this off because that would be a waste of a cool backpack. I'm going to use another one from a, like a standard intercessor. And I'm going to stick like a little trophy thing on the top, like a more Blood Angel-y thing. And the exact same thing for the Dark Angel version as well. Like I said, you can keep these. I think they still look really nice. Kind of makes them all fit like they're in one unit, but this is about kit bashing up different things. So I guess I got to kind of make it look a little bit better than once that's done. Then we're just going to do like the the small little accessories here and there. Okay, so we've done the Black Templar one, like I said, just keeping it nice and standard. And now for the other two guys, I've got the backpacks from the Salt Intercessors. So they've still got the kind of peg on the back. And I'm going to use them because they fit exactly the same as the other ones. Now this little trophy thing is from the Blood Angels upgrade sprue again. Pretty much everything is from there because it's such a badass little upgrade. There is another one on there, different one, but I think this one probably will suit nicely there. So I'm going to be sticking that one on top there. And the Dark Angels upgrade sprue also has one of these as well, but I'm not going to be using that one. This is actually from, I think this is from the old Dark Vengeance box set on one of the old like monoposed Dark Angel Marines. And for some reason I had this lying around in my bits box, so I thought I might as well use this. I know it's painted up and stuff, but once you spray over it, it'll be fine. I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of slicing just to get it to fit in place, but yeah, that's the one I'm gonna be using for my Dark Angel. Okay, so we've got all the big things done. We've got our little backpack banners on here. I think they're looking pretty snazzy. I think the only one I'm not 100% keen on is probably the Blood Angel one, to be fair. This was my favorite model up until putting this one. I don't know if it kind of feels like it takes away from the the whole kind of thing, the flow. Maybe it's too chunky. I'm not really sure, but it's on there now. So yeah, we've got that. That's pretty much all the big stuff done. I mean, like I said before, you can go way over the top with these models if you want. You can change the swords and whatever. But, you know, I'm doing a whole army. I'm trying to reserve some bits. 
But for the final step, what we're going to do is dive deep into our bits box and find loads of little accessories. So you have uh, loads of parchment slash purity seals, you know, dark angels and black templars love getting riddled in these things. So we're going to need some of them. And the actual intercessor kit comes with like a little like trophies and stuff like little bones and keys. Keys are going to be good for the dark angel. There's even this little, I think it's a book. Yeah, you've got this little book here. So that will be good for the Dark Angel as well. And I've got a couple like these little strappy bag grenade things that I might stick to the chest because, you know, mine are going to be Death Watch. But yeah, just raid your bits box and slap things where you think is appropriate, really. If you've got loads of like, like Blood angel -y Blood Drops and stuff, you can slap them on like the hilt of the sword. I don't really have any right now. So I'm just going to go ham on some Purity Seals and bone trinkets and keys and stuff like that and yeah then i'll get back to you guys when everything is complete and there we have it guys i think i'm going to call them done at this point so after the backpacks all i really did was added a couple little like accessory trinket kind of things for the blood angel dude i didn't do much i just added a little bone trinket down there and a purity seal there just to give his arm a bit more of a movement like you can see it flowing through the air because i feel with the robe and the Everything he feels quite busy and feels blood angel -y enough. Like I said, I'm not too sure about the top banner, but everything else I'm digging quite a lot. So that's that guy done there. Next up was the most standard of them all, the Black Templar. So obviously, apart from the chains and everything like that, all I did was I added another purity seal down there, one on the side, and then of course he's got one there as well. So it's kind of got three of them going on, but that's literally all I did for him. And then lastly... For the Dark Angel, probably the most accessorized out of the lot. He's got his little key trinket down there. Then I put three purity seals on his shield. Because I just feel like that kind of composition and everything just felt right for that kind of space right there. Gives him that more like old school knightly monk kind of vibe. Got the book down there. Or whatever that thing is supposed to be. And a purity seal up there as well. So yep, yeah, pretty much done on a cut to a showcase. And there we have it guys it was a bit of a long one but i hope you enjoyed the video or at the very least got some good ideas or inspiration for your future projects and if you did enjoy the video maybe hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet maybe check it out and give it a go because i release hobby content like this every single week and also if you do watch my content often i've recently done a patreon campaign and a merch store so if you want to kind of help support the channel help keep my bits box full for these projects then the links will be in the description below but until the next one guys bye bye